Hi, and welcome back to Heimler's History. In the last video, we talked about the cultural consequences of the interconnectedness that trade provided to the world from 1200 to 1450. This video is going to explore the environmental consequences of that connectivity. And if that sounds boring to you, don't worry. By the end of this video, we'll have talked about rice, eh. bananas, still sounds boring, and worldwide death. And that's what I'm talking about. All right, let's get to it. All right, we need to talk about two major categories of things that spread throughout networks of exchange, agriculture and disease. So let's start with agriculture. You see, as merchants traveled from place to place, they sometimes introduced crops that those lands had never seen before. And when that happens, there can be major consequences. And one of the most significant of these crops I've mentioned in several other videos, namely Champa rice. Champa rice was introduced to China by merchants who traveled from the Champa Kingdom in Vietnam. And this strain of rice was drought resistant and could be harvested several times a year. This of course led to massive population growth in China, but the environmental impact of Champa rice was significant too. The introduction of this crop led to the transformation of the land, namely in the form of terrace farming. This was a method of farming that made previously unfarmable land farmable by cutting steps into hillsides so that you could plant rice. And again, the more food that was introduced into China, the more the population grew. Another significant crop introduced by merchants was bananas. And this time it was Indonesian merchants bringing those crops into sub-Saharan Africa. And this had huge consequences because when the Bantu-speaking people of Africa learned how to plant this crop, it changed their entire lives. You see, for these people, their food staple was yams, and so that means they lived exactly where yams could be produced. But with the introduction of the banana, these people could move into regions where yams couldn't grow. And, spoiler alert, they did. And so because this Indonesian fruit was introduced into Africa, whole populations began to migrate. And the same kind of thing happened all throughout the world. And in general, when new crops were introduced to a place, populations increased. But when populations increase, as you can imagine, that puts more pressure on the land and that means there are more consequences. For example, overgrazing in Great Zimbabwe led to such severe environmental degradation that the whole city was abandoned in the late 1400s. In Europe, the land was changed through deforestation, which eventually led to to profound erosion of the soil. Combine that with the Little Ice Age that started in the 1300s and there was a severely contracted agricultural production during that time. Okay, those are some of the environmental effects as a result of trade. Now let's look at the spread of disease. Lots of diseases spread through merchants arriving on new shores, but surely the most significant of these diseases was the Black Death or the bubonic plague. Now, today we understand how this disease was spread, namely through fleas. And the way it worked was this. Fleas would bite a carrier that was infected with bubonic plague. Then the bacteria would multiply in the flea's guts until it got so abundant that it would clog up the flea's guts. So then they would bite anything that was near, sometimes a human, and regurgitate that bacteria into the bite. And to me that's just insulting because not only are you getting the black death into your bloodstream, which is going to kill you in a few days, but you're also simultaneously getting honked on by a flea. Now, thanks to our friends the Mongols and their unrelenting lust for more land, as they pushed further and further into new territories, they unknowingly brought these fleas with them. But the Mongols can't bear all the weight of responsibility here, the spread of this disease also came along trade routes, especially ships that provided homes to infected rats. But not only that, as merchants traveled over land, they stopped to rest in what were called caravanserai. These were little places that dotted the length of the Silk Roads where merchants could rest and sleep. However, they did so in close proximity to animals, and animals have fleas. So all that to say, the Black Death was a major consequence of connectivity during this time. And whenever it showed up in a town, the results were devastating. And probably the most famous account of the effects of the Black Death came to us from the pen of Giovanni Boccaccio in his book The Decameron, and here's a little taste. The symptoms were not the same as in the East, where a gush of blood from the nose was the plain sign of inevitable death, but it began both in men and women with certain swellings in the groin or under the armpit. They grew to the size of a small apple, or an egg more or less, and were vulgarly called tumors. In a short space of time, these tumors spread from the two parts named all over the body. Soon after this, the symptoms changed and black and purple spots appeared on the arms or thighs or any other part of the body, sometimes a few large ones, sometimes many little ones. These spots were a certain sign of death, just as the original tumor had been and still remained. And maybe Boccaccio's best summary of the effects of this disease were as follows. He said, the victims ate lunch with their friends and dinner with their ancestors. Anyway, this dreadful disease found its way into many societies throughout Afro-Eurasia and largely as the result of trade. And after all was said and done, it eviscerated huge portions of the world's population. In fact, in Europe, for example, most estimates are somewhere in the neighborhood of 50%. Now, as you can imagine, this situation had significant consequences. And maybe one of the biggest consequences was economic. The Black Death changed the relationship between workers and lords in Europe, for example, because now that half the population was wiped out, workers 
workers were all of a sudden pretty scarce, and with this higher demand for labor, power for negotiation of wages shifted squarely into the hands of the surviving workers. Okay, that's what you need to know about the environmental consequences of trade. If you're an AP World History this year, then subscribe to the channel and I'll help you get an A in your class and a 5 on your exam. And if you like hearing about fleas honking black death onto human beings, then hit the like button and let me know. Heimler out.